Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today's video is very, very different. We're actually going to try and see if we can break some stuff. So I have um, a bunch of things here that people have suggested using to foil with. I've got an iron, I've got a hair straightener. We're going to give some of these a try and we're going to see how they work. I'm not going to cut out any of my fails. If I fail here, we're all going to laugh along with it together. So if you want to see what does and does not foil using normal household items that you might have around the house, then just stay tuned. All right, so for all of these experiments, we're going to keep a couple of things exactly the same. So I have printed out a couple of, so these are just on A5 paper. These just say dream, then do over and over again. This is something I've made myself, um, just using Photoshop, wasn't very complicated. But that have all been printed on the same kind of paper at the same time, which was about 20 minutes ago. Um, and they're all exactly the same. So I can't say the paper has changed through any of these. So at least we're keeping a constant. The other constant we're gonna keep is I'm using my fuse mat, which is a heat proof mat. So therefore I'm not gonna damage my desk, um, especially when we're using the iron. And I'm going to iron, press, push, whatever I do, all through just a piece of scrap A4 paper. That way it's gonna stay the same as well. Um, I went through all of everybody's comments and I worked out, like I've collated a list of what you guys thought would foil, wouldn't foil. Um, things I can't do, I can't print onto fabric, so therefore I can't try fabric. The same thing, I can't print onto canvas. So those two things I think are I, I can do some more investigating on how you could print onto and foil, but I think maybe a little bit out of the realms of what I am able to do. Um, if you are interested in those, let me know down below and I'll see what I can do. Um, the only one I'm a little scared of here is my hair straightener, just because I love my hair straightener, I don't want to break it. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. So we'll start off with the iron because that seemed to be the most requested item. I have so many cords on this desk right now, it's ridiculous. Um, I also want to preface all of this with saying if you are working with items that are hot, i.e. hair straighteners or irons or fuse tools, just make sure you keep all the kitties out of the way and just beware of where you put your hands. I've burnt myself on my fuse tool once before and it wasn't enjoyable, um, so I highly recommend not doing that. Um, so when it comes to settings, I have this on a zero steam setting. There's even more to the point there's no water in here at all. This is just a normal iron. I don't iron, so I'm not scared of breaking this because if we break it, eh, we don't use it anyway. Um, and I have it on max. If it doesn't work, if this burns too much or something, I will turn that down and we'll try again. So I could do this through a tea towel. I'm not going to. I'm going to attempt to do it just through... A piece of paper which hopefully will protect the um, protect the iron from getting broken. Where are my scissors? There they are. The scissors aren't where they should be. Uh, so I just got some scissors and I'm just cutting out as much of the foil as I need. Uh, this is Heidi Swap silver foil. I'm only using the silver because I bought it most recently so therefore I've got more of it. I'm never particularly careful when I cut out the shapes just because I don't need to be. Can I? There we go. I'm going to lay that down over the top. You don't have to put too much if you don't want to. If you want to just put just enough to cover, you can. And then we'll put a five piece, a four piece of paper over the top. So just a scrap piece of paper. As long as it's white and doesn't have anything on there that could transfer, I think you're okay. So you need to make sure that the silver is down the nice side up. So you've got the matty kind of side down and then you've got the shiny side and then you put your paper over the top. Here you goes. Why am I scared? So as far as I'm aware, you need to use pressure and heat here. So I'm pushing reasonably hard and just doing in little circular motions just to see, get the best result. Just going up again, and then down again. I haven't killed my desk, that's a good start. Paper feels hot though. And we're gonna pull that up. Ooh, we actually might have a result here that's not bad. So I'm just gonna give this just a little bit of a rub just to 
try and get as much as I can. And then we're going to pull that off. Wow! Holy moly! Alright, that's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. In some of these it has. It has actually foiled completely like this third line down. No, fourth line down is third line down is just about perfect. Some of the others are a bit patchy. There is a little bit of transfer over here on the side. But that's pretty good. Like that's about what I got with my laminator. It gives a really cool kind of, especially with this black, it gives a really cool kind of half matte, half silver effect. That's really cool. I'm really impressed with that. Well done, iron. I've now found a use for my iron. I'm very impressed. So I'll, I'll grade all of these at the end. So at the moment we can say that the iron is definitely the front runner. And I'm just gonna write iron on the top here so that I know which page was what. So our second tool that we're going to try here is my hair straightener. This is a GHD. This is why I'm scared because this is my pride and joy. Ryan, do you agree that if we break it, you'll buy me a new one? Oh. Now I'm scared. I don't care about ruining the iron. I don't use an iron. <laughs> but I do use my hair straightener like every day. All right, we're going to, this is how much I love you guys. I'm going to try this. So I have another bit of foil and I have another one of the Dream Do's. What I might do is just cut this a little bit smaller so that I can get my hair straightener all along the side. So obviously this isn't going to work for like whole pages, but for small bits, this actually might work. So I'm just going to cut this so that I've got just a bit of the dream do. That's about how wide that is. Yep, that works. And we'll just cut a little bit of the foil. And like I said, this is just Heidi Swap foil, but you can use any heat transfer foil. I'll read this to you. So it is silver reactive foil. I'm trying to say anywhere where it says heat, but it doesn't. Use with the mink foil applicator. Well, we can try it without using that. But anyway, basically you just need heat, I think, and a little bit of pressure. So we've got, got that ready. We've got our piece of paper. I'm going to use a new piece of paper every time just to make sure that we keep as much fair as we possibly can. I need a bigger bit because I'm scared of breaking it. I'm sure it won't. I'm 90% sure it won't. So I've got my foil in between my two bits of paper. This one's obviously a little bit harder because you can't put it on a flat surface. You've got to kind of wiggle it around a little bit. If you really wanted to be extra super careful, and I think I will just because I am being a bit super careful with this one, you could put that, the, um, put the foil down, put what you want to foil over the top and then just stick it down with some washi. So I'm just gonna grab just some washi tape just stick down the edges just so that they don't move. Now whether or not this causes an issue with the actual foil I don't know but I'm much more happy to kind of break a little bit of my experiment here rather than break my hair straight and I hope you guys understand that. Um, so here we go we're gonna push down reasonably hard and then just push along. Oh I don't like the sound of that. It's right, my hair straight is fine. I think I just got a little bit too much on the um, on the foil bit. So I'm just going over that a couple of times and it's exactly the same way I do my hair to be honest. Righto. Then we'll take the washi off carefully. This is rather exciting. I like the reveal parts. Hope you guys are as excited about this as I am. Ooh, that looks promising. So I'm just going to rub again, same way I did before. I'm just using the paper just because you get a better kind of rub. I'm learning as we go here. Whoa, whoops. Sorry, that got stuck. We missed the reveal. Okay. That's very much more patchy. There's whole bits where it hasn't worked, and that's because you can't actually see where you're straightening. And the pressure isn't consistent because obviously I'm squeezing that, and I can 
let go or not be as tight in some bits. But it does still have foil there and I do still like the effect. So it's definitely not as good as the iron, but it does foil. Does it pass the experiment or does it fail the experiment? It passes the experiment, just not as well. So I will really quickly try a little bit more. I've got the other bit here, so we'll try it again and we'll try and be a bit more um, solid with it. I'm just going to cut a little bit of that off because I can't do that much. Alright, and I'm going to be a little bit more consistent with the heat this time and I'm going to try and hold it as solid as I possibly can and ignore any weird hissing things. I'm kind of wiggling this because it's the smoothest way to do it. Pulling it doesn't seem to work, nor does sort of pulling it down the paper. And that's I think because the paper's got a little bit of slide to it. No, hair straighten still fine. So I'll go over that a couple of times. Once you've done the first one, then it seems to slide along much more evenly. Just beware of where you've just put the straightener because the paper is hot. All right. And I'm just gonna give it a rub again. That's still hot. We'll see how we went. All right, that one's a little bit better. Actually, it's much better. And I think it was all with just the, the consistency of the pressure. It does have a bit of a transfer happening there as though. So the foil is better. The foil is much, much better, but it kind of has a bit of a matte foil to it. Does that make sense? Like it's definitely not as shiny. It's a different kind of shine. Yeah, I'm interested. Because that's a real shiny, the one that you get with the iron is a real shiny shine. Both the straightener, like the straightener on both of those is a bit more of a matte shine, but that one's definitely more. So maybe the more you heat it, the more matte it goes. I don't know. But anyway, straightener does, does foil. Just have to be very consistent with the way you pull it through um, and the pressure that you put on it. All right, so for the next two, Ryan has pointed out that doing either of these on here is going to be basically impossible. So I'm gonna try them both using just these plain rectangles. The first one, you won't need to worry about ink, I don't think. I mean, you won't have to do this square. I'm just going to do it because it's easy. This one is a no heat way, which we can do while we're waiting for my fuse door to heat up. So I'm using this Bostic glue tape. Any kind of double-sided tape here will work as long as it's a solid solid tape as opposed to my uh, Kokuyo dots. Obviously, dots are going to give you a dot pattern, not a plain pattern. So all we're going to do here... Just put, and this isn't going to work as wonderfully because this glue tape is not coming down as evenly as I would like it. But you can just put the tape down. And then stick the foil over the top. This is going to give you another different kind of effect. And I have tried this, so I do know it works. It doesn't give you as nicer of effect, and obviously you can't, um, you can't do anything intricate, you can't do anything that's more complicated than a, a basic shape, but you definitely, uh, it didn't work anywhere near as well as it did when I was playing with it. You can foil with it, it's just, yeah, the results aren't as wonderful as I would like them to be. To show you what it looks like when you put the dots down though, because it does look kind of cool. like I'm reading in braille not that I know how to read in braille but the dots actually look kind of cool and if you could get a consistent which is really hard to do 
the dots would actually look really cool like on a border. It would look almost like washi tape. And that would be really cool as well. So that's another way you can foil. It's probably the worst way you can foil because um, you can't control how much glue comes out. You can't control where or where it isn't patchy. Um, but if you wanted to have a really good go at it with some solid glue, actually, while I'm here, I just had a thought. Considering we were using our glue the other week, let's see if it works with just plain old glue stick. I don't know if it will, but we'll give it a shot. I got glue on my finger. So I'm gonna just cover this up. Again, you don't have to use the, the toner here or the, the ink square. I'm just using it to show me where my guide is. So just covering that with glue. Just grab another bit of foil. Ryan's saying I should wait for that to get a bit more tacky. Is that what we're saying? Oh, I know what he means. Wait for when the foil. I get it. So we might have to do this one as in put it down, but then wait till the glue actually dries to show you guys what it looks like. I am trying to do that without the creases, but it's very hard. So I'm really rubbing that in, making sure that it's stuck solid. And then we're gonna put that one off to the side for a little while and wait for that to dry while we try another technique with the fuse tool. So for anyone that hasn't already seen, I have done a full walkthrough or review of the fuse tool. I don't use it anywhere near as often as I should, which I, I really should use it more. I just, it, it's a it's not a pain, but it, it takes a while to heat up and it, I never seem to get the fuse that I want, but we're gonna see if it works here. So the same thing applies here. You can't use this to foil words um, in that sense, but what you could do is use it to draw on your foil. So I've just placed that down just on my on my black shape. You are gonna have to do this on a black shape of some kind. And just keep in mind that my writing is horrible. Just making sure that's warming up. Um, my writing is horrible, so I don't know how well this is gonna work with my handwriting, but I'm just gonna draw some little shapes on here. I'm just putting even pressure here. There's no sort of real hard pushing or anything. We're gonna leave it like that and we're gonna see what this looks like. So one other quick thing I'm gonna try just on the side here. I'm just gonna do like a scribble. Okay. And then let's see what happens. <gasps> wow! Great idea, Ryan. This was Ryan's idea. How good does that look? Okay, you could get the same effect, honest to goodness, you could get the same effect with a pen, like on a black piece of paper. That's not what's surprising, but that has come up absolutely perfectly. This is a good way to use your little scraps. I'm just wondering if you do like a square and then I actually color that in Still gonna look like a like you've coloured it in. You can't really get it to be solid, but I really like that effect. I think that's really cool, and the fact that you can do that in a bunch of different colours. Like obviously, I've used a plain colour like silver, but if you could do that with a, a holographic gold or a holographic silver or even in a like a rainbow, that would look really really cool. And the shine on that's still really good. I still think you could get the same kind of effect with just a silver pen. But I still think that's really cute. I'm thinking washi tape right now. I'm thinking of making like a washi tape with that. Ooh, ideas coming to me. So the other way we're gonna use the fuse tool is I'm just gonna grab a pair of pliers. And it's because I'm gonna take the sharp tip off. Now your sharp tip comes with your fuse tool. So that's easy to do. And I'm just unscrewing this at the moment really badly because it's getting all tied up in my thing. Again, whenever you're working with something hot, please be careful. And what I'm doing now is grabbing another one of the tips. This was in my extra pack that I bought from Blitzy. Just tightening that up before it gets hot. Um, and this has got like a bit of a, 
I don't know what you'd say there. Like a bit of a crossy pattern. There you go. Look, I just burnt my finger. I knew that would happen. Um, a bit of a cross pattern. And I'm just going to see if this gets the same effect as that does. So I'm just going to wait for that to heat up and I'll be right back. All right. So my fuse tool is kind of heated up. Um, but I just wanted to point out that this is another one where you're going to need a black background. You need something for the foil to adhere to. So unlike when we did with the glues, this one actually needs something to stick to. So you're pushing through the heat and the um, heat and the pressure react with the ink, which is what's causing it to stay, I think. I think that's how it works. So we're going to do just a plain line to start with. I really suck at this. I'm not very good. And I'm just pushing even heat, even heat, even pressure the whole way along. get crisscross with this. There is a nib though that does crisscross. So we'll pull that up and see what we get. Oh that's super cool too. I love that effect. That's awesome. There you go. Foiling with the fuse tool. I found another way to use my fuse tool. I was just looking for ways to foil and now I found a perfectly good way to foil with my fuse tool. How good's that? Oh, I'm in love with that. Again, this is not a way that you can foil in the traditional sense, but this is a cool way that you can use things you've already got around your house with foil, which is an excellent sort of extra thing to know. Oh, I like that. Really do like that. All right, so we've tried all the things I can think of with heat. Could use, we sort of thought about using a hairdryer, but I don't think you get pressure with that. Ryan doesn't think you get pressure with that. So, and it would just blow the foil away. So that one's out. Um, you could use it like a, a heat press, but we don't have one, so that doesn't work. And I couldn't really think of anything else that you could use around the house. If you can think of something, leave it down below and I'll happily give it a try as well. So the last one, we're just going to reveal how the glue went. So we'll just pull this off. And it's dry. So that's not... That's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Definitely gives you the really high shine effect. Um, you might have to be a bit careful with where you put, like where you lay it down so you don't get those crinkles because I think that's what that was. And that just might have been I didn't put enough glue there. But that's actually turned up really well. I, I think it's actually better or more consistent at least than the, the glue tape. But there you go. There's another way that you can use foiling with just stuff that you already have. So when it comes down to ranking these, I think I can really, like to be 100% fair, I can only combine, like compare what can do what with each other. So when it comes to being able to do anything that you can print on, so any shape, any words, anything at all, I think the iron probably wins over the hair straightener. I think you can get good result good results not great results but good results either way but i think the iron is a lot easier to use definitely putting putting it down on a heat proof mat and just being able to go over the top is definitely a lot easier than with the hair straightener and obviously you can do it then on bigger pages um, the hair straightener does work if you don't have an iron a hair straightener would work fine um, but i'd probably go with the iron over the hair straightener when it comes to glues, I think we're going to go with the glue stick over the adhesive. I think that works a lot nicer. And then the fuse tool, I don't really know how to categorize it, but I just want to say I love this. I love that pattern. This is going to pop up in one of my weekly decorations. I can see it coming. But I think that looks really cool. And especially being able to do, like, can you imagine doing like a black washi and then just doing little hand-drawn stars all the way along? Like, how cute would that look? And then just being able to put it in your planner just as black paper. Like, obviously, it's not real washi tape, but it's just paper tape. Like, that's easy to do. And that would look really super cool. I even think the scribble would look really cool. So that's just another way to do it. So I really like that way as well. I'm really happy with all of the results. I think we've found a couple of different ways that you can add foil to your projects if that's what you want to do. Obviously, if you want it to look perfect, if you want it to look the way it's going to look in the stores, I'm going to be dead honest, I still don't get 100% perfect results even with my mink machine. But 
I do get excellent results with them and 90% of the time they are consistent. The biggest problem here is going to be consistency and that was the same problem I had with the laminator. It just didn't quite give me what I wanted. Obviously there are still other ways that you could do this. You could use this with baking paper in between the two instead of using a piece of scrap paper. I just wanted to be extra super careful with especially my hair straightener and my iron because I didn't want to ruin them if I didn't have to. Um, but that's sort of something that you can play with. And now that you know it's safe, it's not going to break your iron or anything, go and play. Go and tell me what you find because I'd love to know what works for you, what you found was the best way to do it. And if you do have a way that has worked or even hasn't worked and maybe you think you're doing it wrong, leave it down below for me and I'll do a little bit more investigating because I actually really enjoyed doing this video. This has been a lot of fun. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget that my live video is tonight at 8 o'clock Australian not daylight savings, still Australian Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time. Um, so if you want to come and hang out with me, let me know what you thought of this video or any of my other videos. Um, I have some cool stuff to show you as well. Uh, you can do that, so it'll be 8 o'clock here on my channel. Hope you guys will come and hang out with me tonight. If you can't, I hope I see you again soon, and otherwise I'll see you then. Bye!